Right, the camera's rolling. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the story of me going from a D student, uh, a really bad student, all the way to Oxford University. I think the story starts off when I was around 15. Now, of course, before that, I went to a local school, which works you very hard. So I had those innate cap capacities for hard work, determination and drive in me from a very young age. But when I went to an international school, that drive kind of faded away. I was 15, I was in a relationship at the time. I was a bit distracted by work, social life, by, by play, football, sports, gaming, all, this, all that sort. And I had loads of friends at the time, mainly through that relationship. And of course, as high school relationships normally go, they end. And that relationship also, with the ending of that relationship, also broke a lot of friends away from my social circle. And back then, I was a bit shocked. I was like, well, what exactly can you do? What, what's a proper response in that situation? Am I meant to try to find new friends? What can I do in that circumstance? And I really didn't know because that was really the first time where in my life where I suddenly saw a massive social circle or social part of my life completely disappear over the course of maybe a month or even two weeks. So I was a bit shocked about that. But then I, was, I said, okay, let me step back and try to figure out what actually is the way forward. And in that moment, I noticed a very interesting dynamic was that the people who left, the people who I used to be eating lunch, dinners with, those were all friends who weren't in the inner circle. Those were all friends on the outskirts. You know, you have friends, acquaintances who you meet for lunch one or two days, perhaps per month or whatever. And then you're like, all right, I'm kind of their friends, but I'm not very close with them. So I lost a lot of those friends. But I realized I had a group of like five or six friends which were still very strong in my life. And then what I said was, all right, we must try to develop or I must try to develop those relationships. And, and therefore I spent way less time socializing. I spent way less time interacting with friends who were these acquaintances. In fact, I just kind of stopped trying to meet new friends. I didn't really care too much about making a new social group. There are, of course, there are problems with that approach. But I was like, okay, let's forget about that for now and let me just make those five friends really, really close to me. And that really transformed my social life completely. So instead of going out to meet people all the time, instead of gaming with loads of people, I just stopped. I kind of dropped all those habits. I had a 180 shift. And I just went completely into what some people might call a season of no or a monk mood. And that was basically a time where I just said, okay, all my social life has gone to complete utter disaster in, in some sense. So I was like, all right, let's just cut the disaster out of my life and focus on what's not a disaster, which was those five friends, which I was really close with. And also the academics, which were still salvage, salvageable at the time. And now I wasn't doing horribly, but in some subjects I was getting a D, a C. Sometimes I wasn't doing very good. So I thought, okay, I could salvage my academics and I could salvage or at least focus on those five friends, which meant less social time, but also more quality social time. And I think that was perhaps a decision which really transformed my life as, an, as a student or as an academic, you could argue. And it really came through those five social groups. Because when you have deep friends, deep relationships in that inner circle, you don't end up discussing the same topics you discuss with friends who are not in your inner circle. You wouldn't be discussing your life goals. You wouldn't be discussing your, your aspirations, your challenges, your weaknesses, your suffering with the people who you rarely know. You'll discuss them with your close friends, but that's because they're your close friends. And I realized that's something that I did as well. I was saying to myself, I am going to have these relationships with those friends, and I'll be talking about my struggles, I'll be talking about my, the times and things which I felt really difficult in my life, and also talk about my goals and how I wanted to work to them. So I had these people I was bouncing my ideas off. So from a very young age, from, from I guess 15 or 16, and, and of course young is very subjective in this sense, but I really had the ability to really develop, and that was basically all I did. And that was almost a selective breeding in, in the sense, you could argue, in, in the sense of evolution, natural selection. I was naturally selecting myself to only have deep conversations with people. And that was only the, the only thing I did for the last two, three years of high school. And that was a very fantastic and wonderful thing which happened to me because then from that, I really developed a friend which allowed me to discover my love for philosophy and theology, which is what I'm studying at Oxford currently. And during that time where I was discovering that love, basically what we did was we would talk about philosophy and theology together. We would have different ideas that we wanted to share, different books we've read, and we'll discuss and debate the ideas within them. And a lot of those were actually tracked on my YouTube channel, Philosophy for All, which, which I'll talk a bit more about in a bit. But that really helps me challenge myself, make me think about my presuppositions, make me think about what I assume to be true, which may not have actually been true. So I really questioned myself a lot in those periods. And I had a massive transformation because I was only focused on academics and deep thought. I was really developing in realms of academics. My, my, my grades and subjects really shot up. 
I went from a D student to a B student, A student, A star student. I, I really shot up significantly over those the course of those three and four years. And also, I was really getting into philosophy. I read so many more books because I just didn't have anything else to do in the time. I wasn't going partying. I wasn't going socializing. I wasn't going to eat another meal with all my, my friends. But I was just either eating a meal with my friends who were talking about philosophy anyways, or I was reading to have those discussions for the meals where I was discussing philosophy and my aspirations with those friends with. So that really challenged my mind to get into the academic mindset. And of course, those discussions really helped me for the interview, because when I went into the interview, what happens in an Oxford interview, if you don't know yet, is, is really you're discussing a certain philosophical idea with a professor in, in, your, in your degree. And essentially, I've already been doing that for the last two years of my life with my friend. After reading all those books, I was like, all right, that's easy. I've already done this loads of times before. Simple. And in the same way, I was um, working on my YouTube channel, which I mentioned, and that was very helpful as well because I then started growing a platform. Of course, it's not very big right now. It still has around 4,600, 4,700-ish subscribers. But nonetheless, that, that YouTube channel really made me do more research for what I was making videos on, which started off as a Christian apologetic channel, but really became, became more of a general philosophy topic. I was able to really interact with thinkers, with professors, I'll have them on the channel, I'll discuss ideas with them, discuss ideas with different people, different viewpoints. And that really made my mind grow so much. And that was just a really, really helpful thing, which I think, once again, must have helped my, um, my journey to Oxford. And finally, I think what really helped me in my journey to Oxford was travelling. I, I have to say a huge thank you to my parents for allowing me to travel to some wonderful countries. And also for my high school for arranging some really wondrous trips. I've been to Kenya, Uganda... I've been to New York City, I've met loads of people in all those different countries, Nepal, Mongolia, and I've been to a lot of places around the world. And what that allowed me to do is understand different cultures, understand different backgrounds, understand different people. That really allowed me to develop a love for people, to really understand who people are, to, to want the best for others. And, and you might say that's more of a value thing, it doesn't really touch into getting into Oxford, but I disagree, I disagree with that significantly. Because what people want from an Oxford interview is to understand your adaptability. Can you learn? Are you a good student? And in that sense, I would say being able to interact with loads of different people, hearing from their ideas, their pains, their struggles, but also their strengths, what they're doing well in their lives, what directions they're using, what tips they use to develop their lives. Those things are equally as helpful in increasing teachability, malleability with your mind, open thinking, critical thinking, as it is reading a textbook, of course, reading philosophy is helpful in that sense, but also interacting truly with the beauty of reality, trying to understand different people is an equally important tool as well. I, I, and I would say these things have really helped me in my life, in my journey again to Oxford. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I know this is a way rawer video than the normal, more structured videos on my channel. But let me know whether you like these types of reflections and discussions. Let me know whether you are on a similar journey. How would you have responded to these different challenges? Or if you want me to go in depth into any of these challenges or any of these activities and stories that you want me to share, let me know in the comments below. I'll happily hear your thoughts there. God bless. I'll see you in the next video and see you soon.